you have more downs than ups, I think, in this game of cricket. So I think you've got to you got to enjoy it and embrace those moments. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a professional cricketer from from probably 15 or 16. I still love playing. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the exciting thing. The new chapter is about to start. Ooh, I've been asked a few questions in my time. I, um, how would I answer that? Oh, I mean, I, I wouldn't say cricket is life, but cricket's obviously had a massive influence from when I first started as a five-year-old to where I am now. Um, I still love playing. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the exciting thing. The new chapter is about to start. Uh, Lutero Ross Patolo to Taylor. Uh, there's going to be a name that I'm going to chuck in there that I, a lot of people won't won't know. Uh, it's actually Lau Pepe. You would have to talk to my mum to get a, um, I guess, the story behind it. But uh, um, a few years ago, I got um, I'm, a, I'm a chief of our village back home, and that's the Lao Pepe side of it. It was funny when I went to Samara in 2017, and that was how they um, actually talked to me. It wasn't Lutero or Ross. It was Lao Pepe, uh, the, the um, you know, the, being chief of the family in, in the village. I guess, uh, you know, I actually get called it a lot. Um, especially obviously around my island family or, or my nickname Gelo. So when they're in the grounds around the country or even in some parts of the, the world, um, when I hear Lutero or Gelo yelled out in the crowd, uh, that's where I know where they are. So that's pretty pretty cool. Where if you just yell out Ross, well, I'm probably not going to look into the crowd because I don't know if they're giving me uh, jip or uh, actually wanting my attention. Sees it the other way, maybe he should go that way and hit it for six. You were saying, Nass, what a way to bring up your 150. 154, that has gone onto the top tier. The stand over there, remarkable innings from a remarkably good young player. Yeah, it wasn't very much an academic. Um, I can remember playing my first first 11 game as a third former. Warrup had a, a, a fantastic history for sport in Warrup College. Uh, you had um, Sir Brian Lahore, um, Sir Bob Charles, they all went to Warrup College. So, you know, when you go there, you see some pretty prestigious, you know, for a little school um, in the Warrup to have people like that, that was a pretty, that was a pretty cool thing to grow up and, and see. But then I got an um, opportunity to go to Palmy Boys, and I think that was that was great. It gave me, I suppose, it gave me life to leave leave home, go to boarding school, and it was a, it was traditionally a cricket school. It definitely fast tracked my cricket. I found I was like most kids. I had a, I think it was like a hockey sock. We had a massive tree out, out the front of our house, and it was actually it wasn't even a cricket ball. It was a hockey it was a hockey ball, and I used to just hit balls for literally hours. I had three sisters who were, they were sporty, but they didn't want to throw to me all day, and Dad never did, so that was just a, that was a way of, if I, even if I'd had a hit beforehand, that, that was my way of sort of occupying myself. Hey, um, and many a times, uh, the neighbours would get really annoyed when you're hitting balls at nine o'clock, quarter past, quarter past nine at night, and you're just going bang, bang, or let's do some back foot. Um, and then you hear this, oi, shut up. Used to always have catches either before an inter school or before a club game on Saturday. We'd we'd have knickers at lunchtime, and I think that sort of that sort of I always like feeling at first slip. But I I was actually in first slip thanks to Flem in my first game. He got injured. I think he hurt his thumb, and I don't know if I was no good in the field. But I went into first slip um, in my first test at Wanderers. So. I learned early on that that's not a bad place to be. Um, and, and I think I was fortunate enough that Flame retired. My sixth test on, I've, I've had a pretty good seat at first slip. It's, oh, what a 
get from Ross Taylor. There's life in the old dog. Yeah, that is an absolute beauty. Oh, he's moved like a man in his 20s, Ross Taylor. That's his family there. They're excited. I can remember... I can remember I went on a trip to, I think I was playing in the Caribbean Premier League and a couple of the um, South African players had their, elder players had their kids there and and it was cool. You could see them, they were experiencing and I thought I always wanted to do that and they all had iPads and I said, I'm never going to give my kids iPads. Well, if it wasn't for iPads, I don't think we could travel actually. <laughs> What feeling do you guys get when you see Dad walk out there from New Zealand? Uh, we feel great. We feel really very proud. I very think proud. is probably the only way to describe it. A little bit nervous <laughs> at times. We get nervous. Um, yeah. Yeah. I stress out a lot. <laughs> and we say yay. Sorry, Dad. When he wins, <laughs> and we go go, go Daddy. Ross yeah. I sort of just listened to start with, I, you know, um, whatever he decided I was going to back him 100%. Um, so yeah, when he finally came to me with that decision, I was like, okay, well, you just got to do what you feel. And for him, the time is right, and I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> but the, the game of cricket's been fantastic to my family. Um, you know, getting, you know, the kids were at the World Cup final, um, going to places all over the world that if it wasn't for cricket I don't think we would ever have travelled to but you know it's, it becomes challenging as you get older they get older they understand that dad's going away for two or three months you know there's been a lot of sacrifice over the years from everybody um, and so yeah it would be nice to sort of move on and, and live a normal life as such you know Victoria's held the fall down fantastically well She's been a rock for, for the family, and you need you need that in, in this day and age. If you don't have a, um, a supportive family and, and friends, it becomes very tough. And I'm, I, I won't, that's one thing I, I do that I won't miss. I can still go to um, weddings and birthdays and funerals that you can't go to, unfortunately. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, and I think my friends are too. Like, when I told them that I was retiring, that's what three or four of them were saying. They're like, well, mate, we're gonna miss the free tickets, but I actually wanna see you more, which um, which is pretty cool. Um, it'll be very emotional, I think. Um, it's been a long road. Um, but I think mixed emotions too will be very proud and, and um, excited for the next chapter as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's provided us with a, a life that we could never have dreamed of, so. Um, yeah, we feel very privileged and, yeah, lucky to be a part of it. Oh, he's off the mark. Oh, that's a shot. Oh, and again. And again. straight down the ground and there it is Ross Taylor he jogs through and he takes himself through to 17 test hundreds he equals Kane Williamson and also his mentor the late great Martin Crow. yeah I think I um I don't really remember much of Hogan as a player to be fair like they probably grates him but I don't really remember. I remember 92 World Cup and, and innings, but he was never a batsman I thought I, I want to emulate or... He came and watched one of my first innings before I'd called him. But I, I sort of knew that I wasn't really where I needed to be, I think, to be a test cricketer. And I'm glad Leanne never told me, my manager Leanne, because um, when he came the first time to watch me, he told Leanne that guy's nothing but a dirty slogger. I think the biggest thing for me and Hogan is we, we had a lot of respect, but it was actually our, our love for wine where I think we first hit it off. Um, 
he was more of a central Otago man. I was trying to get him into the Martin Burpinos, that's um, where I grew up. And I think a lot of our cricket discussions came about from starting with wine. Um, yeah, and then, and then just finishing from there. Uh, shit. Um, he was hard on you though. Like, I think, like it wasn't all, um, it wasn't all, uh, you know, hugs and, and pumping your tyres. You know, he was hard on you, which was, which was good, what you needed. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you'd be proud. <laughs> Sure, that heart is beating at number 17 to equal Martin Crow. What a beautiful shot, too, down the ground. Yeah, it was, it was one of the goals he said when I first met him. He said, try and get to 17 test hundreds. I haven't, I've only got a, a couple more since. Um, well, I suppose you always knew it was coming. Um, but yeah. There's one, there's one moment out there. He always said, um, when there's a butterfly, that's him. So there's a butterfly out there. When I was on about 70, so. Well, I, th I suppose that's where Hogan came into it. I always thought I wanted to be a test player, and but I didn't know if I could get there. Being one of my best achievements is turning myself into a test cricketer because um, I definitely didn't think I could be a test cricketer at the start of my, test, uh, my international career. One thing that's probably helped my career out to the date is actually having a balance, I think. Um, having family, having red wine and hobbies and family and friends to connect with um, gets you away from the game. I think it can eat you up at different stages. Um, but having that balance, um, knowing it's your job and knowing you want to do well, but knowing it's not forever, at the end of the day, it's just a game. Goodness me, what a what a wonderful tribute! You could hear a pin drop in the uh, in the commentary box up here, and I guess as a fan watching on, we're all fans in moments like this, aren't we? But um, there was a lot to take from that. There was. Sorry about that. Apologies. Um, we're all fans. We're all learning things as we watch uh, a tribute like that play out. Support and family were the two things I think I took from that most. And for players like yourselves, as we reflect on the importance of Ross Taylor and what he's done and how he's achieved it all, he couldn't have done it without his family and without the support of the likes of Martin Crowe. Yeah, look, obviously a pretty, pretty emotional piece. And I said at the time we should be playing this over the big screen, but I'm not sure that's a good idea because I'm not sure there'd be too many dry eyes in the house here at Hagley Oval either because you can just see... You can see what cricket's, what it's been able to do for Ross, I think, and, and what it's been able to do for his family, the opportunities that it's afforded them, the, the places they've been able to travel and the experiences that they've had. And you can see what relationships and loyalty mean to Ross as well. And and it's just, a, yeah, it's just a really powerful piece, I thought, yeah. Clemmer, and, and testament to, to Ross and his career. Yeah, it was. It was it was very open, wasn't it? It was very raw. Um, and, and that's what... The way almost Ross played the game, he just had such a natural instinct and ability to play it. It was just whether he could be true to it. Really interesting to see him talk about the self-doubt. Mm. Uh, I actually remember playing Ross in a domestic game, and this young kid is just flaying at everything. I, I think I quipped him, you, you don't want to play for New Zealand. Kid might be a little bit more colourful than that because he's putting us everywhere. But you could tell there was a real talent there, and it was just how it was going to be shaped and moulded. And fortunately for, for us in New Zealand cricket, he fell under the wing of, of, of one of our greatest, uh, who not only taught him about the game and, and set some goals and, and helped shape him, but it went 
outside of cricket as well and and that's the greatest role a mentor can play is to develop you completely or in a broader sense rather than just stats and cricket and that's obviously uh, the relationship that Martin and Ross had which was very powerful and a lot uh, to read into his self-awareness his his willingness to look at himself to turn the mirror on himself and say his greatest achievement is becoming a test cricketer he's achieved so much as a test cricketer but just becoming one because he was raw as you say you said the same thing for him yesterday Martin Crowe said the same thing to him to, to harness and perhaps Brendan the same accusations or criticisms may have been leveled in your direction yeah and I guess uh, test cricket is the purest form of the game it's the the ultimate test it's the hardest challenge uh, takes you to some dark places yeah it takes you to some am amazing places as well and you visit some of those abroad but mentally it can challenge you like no other game that we know can and and to be able to have longevity and success in that game and particularly for someone like Ross who as you you heard had many self-doubts and as Flem alluded to that that is the ultimate achievement and I consider longevity as the greatest achievement in sport but to do it in the in the purest form like that when you had so many self-doubts I think is just a testament to what he's been able to achieve and those around him support. And it's so all-consuming. You both have known it after long, long international cricket careers. What is he about to go through, the transition? There must be some relief, perhaps, both for, his, for himself and his family, some joy to experience, some life, some of that red wine he loves so much. Uh, there's some withdrawal as well. It's not completely easy. It's, a, it's for one of the words, it's almost a drug you've been on for the best part of 20 years. It has been consuming and, and taking the emotions up and down. So when that goes away, there, there is a, a, a real period of adjustment that has to take place. And it is a challenge. It's without doubt. It's not you sink back into family life and everything's rosy. There are things you really miss. You quickly forget the things you didn't like and you start looking at other guys playing and doing well. And it's a real adjustment. So as, as well as he is played and being one of our greats is also a, a great challenge ahead which I'm sure with his family support he'll do incredibly well good stuff thanks for your thoughts guys we'll talk with and to and about Ross over the course